And so what we have is this incredible cosmic court case with the entire universe is watching this planet. And there are many verses that can back that up. And so why did God take this thing to court? It's the only option he had, being the God that he is, being the lover of freedom, because he does not want to force your will. He doesn't force the angel's will and doesn't force your and my will. He wants them all to make up our own minds because God is not a dictator. He wants us all to see the truth. He wants us all to see the glorious character of who he is. And this is why Jesus came. So if we look at the history of this earth, what we have is everything was created good and very good and perfect. Even mankind was made in the image of God and it was very, very good. But remember, Satan is accusing God of being a dictator. And so God says, okay, I'm not a dictator. I give freedom. And that's why there were two trees. The one was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God said, don't eat of that because you will die. That is contrary to life. Don't do it. He had to give them the option of both ways because this is a court case. This is a trial. And the evidence is going to speak for itself. Satan wanted the universe to worship him. And now he wants this earth to worship him. And so he was always wanting to get to Adam and Eve to side on his side of the rebellion. But it would seem that God restricted Satan to just that one tree. He couldn't harass them. He couldn't tempt them. He couldn't speak to them anywhere else. It seems like it was just that tree because that was the restriction God would have put on Satan. Everything else was good. The entire planet was good. But it was just that one tree and the fruit of that one tree. And so the court case begins. Now this is important to know that Adam was given rulership of the world. He said there... Uh, Let them have dominion over the earth. Now that word dominion is rulership because it's the exact same word that was used when the Philistines had dominion or rulership over Israel. It's the exact same Hebrew word. So Adam was given rulership. And we we see this also with um, church fathers like John Chrysostom. There you can see around about 400 AD. And he said, like some angel, in fact, man lived this way on earth, wearing a body, like a king adorned with a scepter and crown, wearing his purple robe. Very interesting what he's saying there. And then John Locke, also in the late 1600s, by the appointment of God, says Sir Robert Filmer, as soon as Adam was created, he was monarch of the world. That's John Locke. So this is not a novel idea at all. This is a biblical idea. But when Adam and Eve took of the fruit, this entire planet changed. Everything changed because now Adam gave rulership over to Satan. And there are many scriptures again that confirm this, right? Adam did give rulership to Satan. Speaking about the temptation of Jesus, the devil took him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you. And their glory for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. Now, what Jesus did not do is say, you're lying. Uh, It hasn't been delivered to you. He didn't answer with that at all because that was true. And Jesus spoke here. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. Wow. And Jesus even said that Satan has a kingdom. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? So Jesus was saying, Satan has a kingdom. So let's have a look at the accusations that Satan made against God. He was saying that God's law is restrictive. It doesn't give freedom. Right, now let's have a look at the law then. The first four commandments deal with love for God and the last six deal with love for man, right? Now, the, the last six form the basis of any ordered civilization. Imagine if everyone obeyed those last six. You wouldn't have keys. You wouldn't have alarm systems. You wouldn't have any burglar bars and razor fences. You wouldn't have any prisons. You, it would be safe to walk out of your home in the city anytime, day or night. Wonderful freedom that comes from the law. So what about this experiment in San Francisco? It's become a shoplifter's paradise. Why? 
22 stores of Walgreens have closed. Why? Because they decriminalized theft under the value of $950. And as a result, San Francisco's shoplifting surge. The world is full of people who thought that God's law was restrictive until they found out that breaking of God's law actually is what restricts their freedom. And here's the next thing. Satan was saying, listen, we need to overthrow God because things will be better under my control, under my governance. I will give you total freedom. Do whatever you want. So what does the evidence show? Well, according to the New York Times, it says that over the past 3,400 years, humans have been entirely at peace for only 268 of them, or just 8% of recorded history. What about this? One suicide every 40 seconds. Wow, how's that for a piece of the evidence against Satan's cause? Under his kingdom, under his rulership, how's the world really doing? 60,000 children were abused. Nearly half a million Americans, 12 and older, were sexually assaulted or raped. What about this? 19,000 experienced unwanted sexual contact in the military. What about that for part of the evidence? And I believe this is part of the deception too. This whole new age thing from the 60s and 70s and 80s, this new age of light and love. It offered a foretaste of the coming era through personal transformation and healing. It's a whole bunch of baloney, right? Because it's a movement with no evidence. Things are not getting any better. In fact, they are definitely getting worse. Crime is going up. Suicide is going up. Abuse is going up. Wars is going up. Everything is just getting worse. Safety is going down across the whole globe. And these guys are saying, well, no, there's a, a period of enlightenment. This is, a, this is from the occult. This is straight from the devil himself because it's a deception trying to say that things are actually getting better when clearly the evidence is saying they are not. And then this just tops the cake, right? The insurance world will tell us that an act of God is any severe, unanticipated natural event for which no human is responsible. And so they blame God for anything where there's no human that's responsible. Well, what about pinning it onto the ruler of this world, the devil? Now, what about this lie over here? Remember, what did the devil say in the form of the snake to Eve? You shall not surely die. You can uh, rebel against God and you won't die. Sin doesn't lead to death. Well, look at this here. 1.93 people die every second. Now, after 4,000 years of Earth's history, the witness of Christ, here he comes into this cosmic court case and he will testify of the character of God. His life was a witness of who he is. Because when God came to earth and lived as a man, in the body of a man, and he left his power in heaven, he limited himself, he veiled himself in human flesh. He could accord it at any instant, but he didn't. And by that we could see who he was without using any of his power. None of his power. It was just pure character here on earth. He was humble. And so the minute that Jesus comes to earth, what happens? Satan inspires Herod to try and put all the children to death, all the male children who were two years old and under. I mean, isn't that an amazing piece of evidence? This little baby, innocent, comes to this world and Satan wants to kill him? Now we can start seeing who's actually telling the truth and who's really the dictator. This is confirmed in the book of Revelation where we read there that Satan's tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. And we'll study later that that woman was Israel. And so the woman gave birth to a male child and that was Jesus. But the dragon was standing there waiting to try and kill him. Big part of evidence. And remember, another accusation was that God is prideful, self-centered, egotistical, and untrustworthy. This is called projection, right? In psychology, they talk about projection. If I'm untrustworthy, I'll make out like you're untrustworthy. I'll accuse you of being untrustworthy. This is exactly what Satan was doing. He was projecting his fallen character onto God the entire time. And so there's a controversy of who's telling the truth. And so when Jesus came down on earth... We read here, Paul writing to the Corinthians, he says, 
whose minds the God of this age, again, speaking about the devil is the ruler of this world and the God of this age, has blinded the minds of people who do not believe, lest the light of the good news of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So he was saying here that Jesus Christ came down in the image of God. This is this is evidence number one of this entire court case is like let's see what the devil does when we have these two characters the fallen terrible selfish nature of the devil and God humbling himself on this earth with leaving his power in heaven and submitting himself to whatever happens to him he just wanted to have his pure character the image of God how humble was he and Satan just abused him and he used mankind to, to torture him to death. Incredible piece of evidence. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. You made it to the end. So do me a favor, like, comment and share. And if you're not yet a subscriber, join us so that you'll be notified when the continuation is uploaded. Again, thank you so much. May God bless you.